Hello and good morning. Welcome to Study the Word. This program is sponsored every week by the Kirkwood Church of Christ that meets at 948 South Geyer Road in Kirkwood, Missouri. Folks, my name is Chuck Bartlett. I'm the minister for the church there, and we're glad you've joined us because this week we're going to be dealing with another question that has come our way, and we hope you'll stay tuned for the next half hour as we study the scriptures together. You see the phone number and, of course, the website that is there. First of all, since we deal with Bible questions, you can call that number or you can text it and leave a Bible question for us to deal with on this program. We'd love to hear from you. Now, the website is there for you to check out our past TV programs because we upload them all. And, of course, our directions and our times of services because we would love to have you come and visit with us when the church is assembled. But we're glad you've joined us today as we study the scriptures. I'll put the phone number up at the end of the program for a longer time and because we offer a number of free Bible study helps. Now, folks, this week's Bible question. I received a number of questions via email, which is great. I'm going to deal with this question um, among all of these questions, but I'll deal with this one this week. And here's how the question is worded. It says, if scripture is supposed to be easily understood by everyone, why is there so great a range of interpretation and so many questions? Well, that's one of the reasons why we do this program, because we try to clear up misunderstandings. We try to clear up false teaching. But this question basically is dealing with why, why is there so much of that? I mean, first of all, can this, are the scriptures easy to understand? Well, uh, in a nutshell, yes, but no. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me clarify. I'm going to first go over to the book of Ephesians, and I'm going to notice here where, where Paul was writing to some Christians, the church at Ephesus. And what he mentions here in chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, he mentions in verse, well, pick it up in verse 3, because I want to notice verse 4. Verse 3 says, How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So the fact that our Lord wants people to listen to his word puts the onus on the hearer, the listener. Now, if the listener cannot understand the message from God, then it would be God's fault. Would he provide a message that is that you cannot comprehend? Well, that wouldn't make much sense. Why give a commission? For example, in, in uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, why do that if people cannot understand the message? Well, the fact is people can understand. And, we're probably, and what we're going to be doing today, folks, if you stay tuned, we're going to identify what are some of the reasons why there are so much, so much confusion, why there's so much misunderstanding, why are some things hard to understand? Well, the Bible, you know, I mentioned earlier, the answer was yes and no when it comes to are the scriptures understandable? Because Peter, making reference to some of the things that the apostle Paul said, even he acknowledged the fact that there are some things that are hard to understand that are written. So let me pick it up in, um, well, let me pick up in verse 15. I'm in 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, here's what Peter writes, and he's going to talk about some of Paul's writings. It says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the rest of the scriptures. 
So when, when it identifies some scriptures as being hard to understand, it doesn't mean you can't understand them. But it's going to take an effort. Now, when somebody is unlearned and unstable, they're going to twist the scriptures to their own destruction. I run into that all the time because people are not studying carefully the word of God, which is what we are responsible for doing. It reminds me of Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. When individuals heard Paul preach, it said they went and they searched the scriptures daily to see whether the things Paul was teaching was so. So it, it takes an effort to, to find out what is being taught, listening carefully, all right, listening carefully. See if the source is the word of God, 1 Peter 4, 11. If any man speak, let him speak by the oracles of God. Because so many people today are preaching their opinions. A lot of people are trying to convince people that they're, they're teaching the truth by talking about a religious experience or personal testimony. Now, people can talk about what the Lord has done for them. But if they're saying, well, that proves that the Lord is with me, well, you got to be careful about that because over there in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus talked about how the rain falls on the just and on the unjust. What does that mean? That means Jesus is saying good things can happen to bad people and bad things can happen to good people. And so if a person is having good fortune, he might think, well, I'm blessed by God. Well, no, Jesus said, you know, Sometimes good fortune can happen to a wicked person. It doesn't mean they're being blessed by the Lord. So you have to be careful about this idea of just saying that, well, I've been blessed. You know, some good fortune has come my way. That must mean I'm right with the Lord. No, what makes us right with the Lord is what James talks about in James chapter 1. And let me just back up there. I'm in Peter right now. In James chapter 1, he mentions in verse 25. Here's what he says. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So our responsibility is to, to go to the scriptures and to rightly divide them, which is what we're responsible for doing. And so when a person asks, well, why is there so much confusion and why are there so many questions that people have well the problem is now you can ask questions because you don't know something but but questioning certain things creating confusion comes from people teaching things that are not found in the scriptures now i i always talk about this at the end of every tv program of late of late i haven't done it all the time we've been doing the tv program but there's a reason why a lot of people request this pamphlet. I usually talk about this at the end of the program, but it ties into what we're talking about right now. You see, this pamphlet is entitled 40 Things People Think Are in the Bible But Are Not. And so if you have religious leaders teaching these some or most or all these 40 things and telling people this is what the Bible teaches, when the Bible doesn't teach those things, well, isn't that going to create confusion? Yes. Aren't people going to be asking a lot of questions? Yes. And asking questions is not a bad thing. Okay. So the person wants to know is that why are why are people asking so many so many questions? Well, they're not only asking questions to know what the Bible says, but people are asking questions to say, why are they teaching this and why are they teaching that? And on this program, when we deal with false things that have been um, presented, that we've examined, and somebody would say, well, then why do they teach that since it's not in the Bible? I can't answer why people do what they do. Now, often what happens, folks, is people are sincere, sincerely wrong, but people are often teaching things that are wrong but they're just teaching what they've been taught. And we're trying to get people to, to think for themselves, which Jesus would often do when he was on the face of this earth. He would try to get people 
to think for themselves and not be a man follower. Okay. Now, Paul dealt with this with the Galatian brethren. Now, we have gone to this text emphasizing the first part of this chapter. I'm going to move down and, and focus on uh, verse uh, verses 10 through 12 here in just a few moments. But let me just remind you of Galatians chapter 1, the, the, the verses before that. Paul rebukes the brethren here at Galatia. So this church that Paul had labored with, he tells them in verse 6, he says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. See, there's the problem. Is that you have people who are perverting the word of God. Remember we read earlier in Peter, people twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Still using the scriptures and people are thinking, well, they're using the Bible. They must be right. Well, not if they're not if they're taking passages out of context and they're contradicting other clear passages of scripture, which we often point out to show the inconsistency and in how people are not handling the word of God properly. So here Paul is attributing their problem to listening to people who are teaching a different gospel, and he's telling them, you shouldn't have been listening to that. That's just wrong. And, and, and Paul went on to say, if anybody preaches any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. So when you acquaint yourself with the word of God and you keep studying it and you get familiar with it, it won't take you long to pick up when somebody is saying something that's not in harmony with the word of God. Now, since we're dealing with the whys, you know, why, why are there so many people um, confused about different things? And what, what is attributed to that? Well, he, he mentions this. If we move down to verse 10, Here's the thing. Paul says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now the reason why you have these 40 things that people are preaching, they're saying it's in the Bible, but it's really not. The reason why they're being taught, folks, is because people want to hear it. It's called supply and demand. Why are there so many different religious groups? Supply and demand. Like there's so many different uh, restaurants. And so Paul, knowing this problem, had to admonish a young preacher not to give in to that. You're not there to tickle people's ears. You need to give them the truth. And we appreciate hearing from our viewers. We hear from viewers all the time. And they, uh, they are so thankful that we're just, we're just staying with the scriptures. Bible questions deserve Bible answers. Folks, that's all we do on this program. We're not trying to solicit funds from you. We don't want anything from you. We're just trying to present you with the truth. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Now, getting back to what Paul was telling young Timothy, which if Timothy didn't lead to, uh, excuse me, if, if Timothy didn't listen to what uh, Paul was going to admonish him to do, then Timothy would contribute to the problems that we're talking about, the religious confusion, the misunderstanding, the, the false teaching that is out there. That's if he didn't listen to Paul. And so here, here's what Paul told him. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, he was told this. He said, preach the word. He said, well, wait a minute. Well, they're not going to understand it. Yeah, that, that, they can understand it. He says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. When it's popular and when it's not. He says, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Well, there are times when people, people don't want to be rebuked. They don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be instructed. They just want to go and hear what they want to hear. How do I know that? Because Paul went on to talk about it here. That's why he brought it up. That's why he was admonishing Timothy. Now, look, you preach the word. 
And you'll be instant in season and out of season. Why? Look at verse 3. The time will come, he tells Timothy, when they will not. Who's they? The people you've been preaching to. These are Christians that will turn away. Notice, he says, there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. What do you mean? Well, that well, they had been, but they're not going to any longer. There's going to come a time, he said, they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Bottom line is, you say, why is there so much confusion? Well, it's it's only confusion for those people who are saying, you know, who are looking and, and then they're seeking. And they're saying, but why are all these problems? Well, but not everybody thinks that way. Not all religious people are saying, why is there so much confusion? They're not even thinking about that. They're just caught up in what they're doing and they're happy with what they're doing. And their ears are being tickled and uh, life is grand for them. But I find it rather interesting. Time and time again, I, I run into these folks who are very religious and they're, uh, they have peace of mind. Everything is wonderful. But when I open up my Bible and I want to study, they run. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about the Bible. They don't want to look at the 40 things that people are preaching that are saying in the Bible, but they're not. And I also turn around and say, hey, do you want to know what these... Uh, they're also telling you that things are not in the Bible, and they are. Here's these 30 things that people are saying that's not in the Bible, but they really are. Well, I don't want to look at that, they'll say. Well, that's their choice. That's their choice. But for those people who want to seek, here's the good news, getting back to our question. When the person says, if the scriptures are understandable, well, they are, is the point. They are understandable. That's why the message was given in a way that people could comprehend why would God, and you think about this, why would God hold people accountable for his written word if people could not comprehend it? No. No, it, it is understandable. So again, what we're talking about today, if you've just joined us, um, people are wondering, and I've been asked that question, why is there so much misunderstanding? Well, when it comes to the scriptures, it has to do with the, the the people that are teaching things that they want to teach, not only that, but teaching things that the audience wants to hear. You see, when Timothy was told to preach the word, don't give in to them just to tickle their ears. Well, it's possible that a, a person could say, okay, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to tell them what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. Well, we don't want to do that. And that's why Paul said back there in Galatians chapter 1 and in verse 10, if I seek to please men, I could not be a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, there are times when people are going to be pleased with hearing the gospel and Paul would ha help people learn and become Christians. And that was wonderful. But by and large, what Paul is talking about here, I'm not here to be a man pleaser. And this is what happens when you when you preach the word, there have been times when you'll have to correct, you'll have to rebuke. That's what he told Timothy to do. And that's naturally going to happen when you preach the word of God. Why is that? Well, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, the apostle John, remember, John is an apostle. And in that section, he uses the word we and us and he says, if we, and he included himself, talking to Christians, if we say we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth's not within us. But then he talks about how that we are to confess our sins and God is faithful and just to forgive us. But here's the point. Since we're not perfect, then we're going to hear lessons from time to time that point out our transgressions and we need to change our ways. This is why we are admonished in, what is it, Second. Corinthians chapter 13 and in verse 5, Paul again admonishing brethren to do this very thing. He says in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, he says, examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Prove yourself. Do you not know your, uh, do you not know yourselves that 
Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you're disqualified. So if you're going to examine yourself, whether you're in the faith, how are you going to do that? Not based upon a feeling. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. And since faith comes by hearing the word of God in Hebrews 11, verse 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You want to please God? You have to walk by faith and not by sight. And for you and I, here's the comfort of knowing that we can go to the scriptures and we can study the scriptures and we can do exactly what the Lord has told us to do. Some things are hard to understand. Yes, there's no question. Not impossible. It's all part of the growing process. Um, that's why the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 5, 12 through 14, he, he was rebuking some of the uh, Christians there. He says, you know, you need to be taught the first principles of the oracles of God. You know, you should be teachers by now. You should be on to the meat, but you need to go back to the milk. Well, there's a time, folks, when things are hard to understand when you're on the milk, when you're a babe. But as you grow, as you study, you can handle more and more and get into that word. Um, this is a, a fundamental thing that I try to get across to people when I'm studying with them. They'll often want to get into a Bible class and right away they say, can we study the book of Revelation? I'm saying, whoa, 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 man. That's just like a newborn baby wanted to want, give them a steak. Well, they can't, they can't handle that yet. You need to get some, the fundamentals down. We need to get some understandings and so that you can understand what is being talked about in that particular book. A lot of people have been frightened by it. A lot of people have misunderstood things from that book. Um, and a lot of false teaching comes from that book. It's a breeding gap ground for all kinds of error. And the reason being is because people are not rightly dividing the word of God, which is what we're responsible for doing. Handling the scriptures properly, and that's what we do with, with this program. We, we, we provide that Bible answer, but we're, we're not taking passages out of context. And we're not going to teach things that are contrary to the other clear passages of Scripture. This is why we encourage people to be students of the Word and not just put your faith in some man or some organization. Well, I'm just going to do what Chuck says. No. You don't. Well, I'm just going to do what the Church of Christ says. No, we're not trying to convert anybody to the Church of Christ. You're, you're trying to convert people to Christ and listen to Him. That's what Jesus said. My sheep hear my voice. It's what Jesus said. And we need to be followers of him. Are you dedicated and loyal to an organization? Or are you dedicated to Christ? Now you sit there and say, well, they're one and the same. No, they're not one and the same. Because we need to, Second, Second John 9, we need to abide in the doctrine of Christ. Not some church doctrine in the doctrine of Christ. Church doctrines, creeds, manuals come from the mind of man. And we need to follow the Lord. This is the inspired word of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And the scriptures are inspired by God. And it says it's, it's profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for instruction, for correction. It's profitable for that? Yes. And it's not left up to certain people that have a, that are able to understand it. You know, people say that, well, Chuck, I'm not a preacher. Um, I really can't read and understand it. You, you have a special knowledge. No, no. I've had to study just like other people. And we all have the ability to go into the Word of God and learn, which is why we encourage people to study in the comfort of their own home. We have people every week, every week we'll say, Chuck, can you go ahead and send me that first lesson of that sixth lesson free home Bible study course. They take it and they open up their Bibles at home and they answer the questions and they mail, they fold it, they put it back in the envelope we, we supply with the stamp on it and they get lesson number two. And it doesn't take long to go through those six lessons. But people are amazed in that short study of the things that they learn. People will write back and say, I have learned more from those six lessons than I have in years going to a church wherever they were going because it gets people to open up their Bible, not just becoming a blind follower, which Jesus warned about. If the blind lead the blind, both fall in the ditch. Study the scriptures, folks. Would you be interested? Just leave your name and your address. You can, you can text it. If you call that number, 
your name. I love the fact that people often spell even their street number or name. And uh, we'll get it in the mail right away. And as I mentioned earlier during the program, if you were with us, these two pamphlets, you know, the 40 things that we can put it in with your first lesson. These 40 things that people are saying in the Bible, it's not. And 30 things that are in the Bible, which people say uh, it's not in the Bible, but it really is, or they really are. And so if you would like those, just request them. I'll know what you mean when you say, send me the 40, the 40, 30 tracks. And of course, the free home Bible study course. No, no money for this. It shouldn't cost you to learn the word of God, folks. Our goal as members of the Kirkwood Church of Christ, we're just trying to encourage people in the St. Louis and the surrounding areas to get to know the Lord and how you get to know him is to open up the scriptures and learn. This is the mind of our Lord on paper. and you can, you can know about him, so you need to study. You can also request to be put on the mailing list for the weekly bulletin. It's also called, like this program, it's called Study the Word and a couple of short articles that encourage you to open up your Bible and study some more. So if you're interested in that, please let us know. Now, what a number of other folks have been doing lately, and that is calling up and saying, Chuck, I'd like a face-to-face -face Bible study. Great. You want to have a Bible study at your place? We can meet at the church building or at a neutral place. You can have friends and family join if you would like. And if you're a lady and you want a small class, we can bring another lady or ladies, you can join. Um, we make it easy, folks. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable and we work, work around your schedule. Studying with a man right now, you know, sometimes we meet in the afternoon, sometimes the evening, sometimes on the weekend. We have other classes at the church building and other places and in the homes of folks. So, if you would like your own personal Bible study where we can just study some of the things we've talked about even on this program so that you can understand the Word of God. This one guy that I'm studying with, I told him, I said, you know what? In three classes, three 40-minute classes, we're meeting in his apartment. I says, after the, those three classes will give you an understanding of the big picture of the Bible. And when you're finished with those three classes, you'll have a better understanding of the Bible than people that have gone to church their whole life. And that intrigued him. And that's what we're doing. We're studying. So if you'd like to get together in a Bible study, just let us know. Folks, as I mentioned earlier, this is brought to you every week by the Kirkwood Church of Christ. We'd love for you to come and assemble with us if you're ever in the area. Please tell your family and friends about this program. Let other people know that if they have a Bible question, send it in or watch the program. They can learn and study with us, along with us. But if you're in the area, Come and be with us every Sunday morning at 9.30 for a Bible study, 10.20 for worship, and then 5 o'clock in the afternoon in a midweek Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock in classes for the all age groups. Bring the whole family. We'd love to have you. Folks, tune in next week. We're going to open up our Bibles together, and we're going to study the Word. Thank you.